What's going on, MAAs? It's Rob again, back at you. Been a minute, took a week off last week, wasn't feeling that great. Uh, but back this week, just got back from the card show with my good friend, NAA Eric. Uh, good to see him, had a great time. If you know me, normally I spend maybe 30 minutes at most of the card show, but uh, Eric and I got together and searched a bunch of boxes, spent two and a half hours. He's actually still there as I'm recording this. Uh, he's a lot more pickier on his cards and pickups than I am. But uh, I spent the majority of my time going through a 25 cent bargain box and getting these two stacks. For those of you that don't know, I'm trying to get a 1968 complete set. Now, obviously these cards aren't in the best shape, but 1968 was a long time ago. And so I got uh, 102 of them. Now I'll probably have some of these already because I forgot to bring my checklist because you know I didn't expect to see any because I've been to the show probably 10 times and I haven't run into a dealer that has any. So I'm really excited to go through this, check off what I got. Um, all commons, obviously, but found some checklists that were unmarked and a couple that are marked. But uh, if you, you know, you're out and about, the checklists are really hard to find. So I'm excited about that. And at 25 cents, I mean, you can't beat it. So I ended up getting uh, these two stacks for $15, which to me is a phenomenal deal. You know, it's less than probably 20 cents a card. Uh, like I said, the guy was charging 25 cents a piece. He got tired of counting and said, how's $15 sound? I said, great. But, uh, you know, not, nothing meant. Doesn't have to be meant. But uh, what was that? Little Burt Bly Levin, Andre Dawson, one of my all-time favorites. Jim Rice, Hall of Famer, Tom Seaver, Rod Carew, another Rod Carew, Phil Necro, Willie Randolph, highly underrated in my opinion. Uh, let's go here. Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. Not sure how he's in there. I guess it's a uh, Hall of playing a long time. Never been a huge Harold Baines fan, but hey, for less than a quarter, why not? Fergie Jenkins, Dave Parker, the Cobra. Uh, Catfish Hunter beat up, but for 25 cents, why not? It's a cool card. Uh, Gary Carter, another Fergie Jenkins, uh, another Bly Levin. Kurt Gibson, Ryan Sandberg, Tommy Aaron, just because it's Hank's brother. Dick Allen, Murphy, Trammell. Uh, this William McCovey seen better days, but why not? 500 home run club. Pete Rose can't pass him up. He's got a couple wrinkles on the top, but hey, less than the quarter. Steve Carlton, Bly Levin again, another Rice, another Carlton. And so I'm going to fly through and show you kind of some of the cards I got. I mean, like I said, nothing meant, but a lot of Hall of Famers and stars. Lou Whitaker, in my opinion, is the. Uh, Best player, not in the Hall of Fame. If you look at his war numbers, he's over, I believe, 75, and so he probably deserves to be in. But, you know, I, hopefully the old-timers get it right because with the new metrics and, uh, you know, shows what a great player he really was. So he's kind of one of my guys. If I see Lou Whitaker, I buy. And uh, hopefully he gets in the Hall because he's deserving. And Tony Levin, speaking of Hall of Famers, just got in. And Tommy John, Gaylord Perry, Bruce Soder, Carlton and Carlton. But uh, I'll just fly through here and little Stargell. Doc Ellis, the little Neek Road, Boog Powell's one of my favorite guys and all time greats, Rogers Hornsby and Lefty Grove is kind of, I like it because it, it shows the stats on the back. And to me, I like looking at the stats and comparing the old time greats to, you know, the young guys. Uh, Daryl Evans, a guy like another Tommy John, Gary Carter, another Randolph, Garvey, Lee Smith. Kent Herbeck rookie, Carlton, and another Kent Herbeck rookie. So like I said, I got those two stacks for $15. Nothing meant, but like I said, I'm working towards my complete 68 sets. That's exciting. Uh, next, I was looking for vintage basketball. The whole reason I even went to the card show. I'm trying to put a card list of the top 20 NBA all-time scoring leaders. Just have one actual card, not a reprint, because I got some reprints of some guys, but... To me, the reprints, I mean, they're nice, especially if you're a younger collector, but I want the original stuff. So, George Gervin, rounded corners, I don't care. Dollar, he's on my scoring list. And look at that, we got the stats. I love the stats. I have the stats. Um, Earl, the Pearl Monroe, this is my dad's favorite player growing up. I never saw him play live, obviously. It's before my time, but... Uh, for $5, Earl of Pearl. Once again, it's complete stats. So I'm probably going to give this one to my dad. He's not much of a card collector, but uh, 
you know, it's his favorite player, so why not, you know, give it to him, you know, something cool to have. Um, Elvin Hayes, legendary high score and big man, uh, probably doesn't get the uh, credit he deserves for his career. But uh, once again, I just love the old card with the stats. 17,000 points in the NBA, 24-point average at this point in his career. You know, big guy that doesn't get the uh, respect he deserves, but, you know, very cool card. Uh, next, all-time NBA scorer and leader at this point. You know, LeBron stays healthy and keeps doing what he does. He's going to pass him, but uh, for $10, pretty good Kareem card. Obviously, uh, corners are fairly sharp. I'm not going to get it graded or anything, but was 30, got it marked down, but look at that. We got the stats, 26,000 points. I mean, played played to his 40, so, I mean, that's a great card. That was one of my cards on the list. I'm trying to find a Wilt Chamberlain. That's going to cost me some money. I know that, but uh, I didn't see any Wilt Chamberlain, so, but I did get a cream, so hopefully in the next six months or so, I'll be able to have a video of the top 20 NBA scoring leaders with their cards. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you all is some graded stuff. This is where things got off the rail. So, guy was selling graded cards, 50% off sticker price. So, if you wonder how much I paid, just uh, divide it by two. Uh, so, first thing I got was a 1952 uh, Tops Authentic. I've never owned a 52 Tops card for $10. Actually, $5. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and get one. Obviously, this guy's a common card, but I've been collecting cards since I was a little kid, and I've never even purchased a 1952 card before now, so for $5, why not? You know, it's pretty cool. I'll put it in on there, and I think uh, I'm going to go for uh, at least one card of every Tops year made, and so 52s are rare, and they're expensive. I can't afford any of the cool ones, but for 5 bucks. Authentic, I don't care. It's a cool card to have. Um, next up, we've got a 1990 Nolan Ryan throwing the football. Uh, one, of, one of the most iconic cards to me. Love this card. Love, love the 89, 90, 91 upper deck. Obviously, their value is not that great, but uh, I mean, that's just a really cool card. 89 upper deck is probably my favorite design, and that's just a really cool card of a Guy throwing a football is probably the best strikeout pitcher. Well, then probably he is the best strikeout pitcher of all time. So that's a cool card. Uh, next thing I got, got a little theme going here. 89 upper deck Mike Schmidt. Uh, 20 bucks. Jim meant 10. Sure, why not? Uh, you know, personally, I'm a uh, PSA fan for the most part, but GMA, you know, at the price. Why not? Uh, just looking at his stats, 500 home run club. You know, love the design with the picture on the back. I mean, this is, to me, probably my favorite non-top set of cards of all time. Just really, really like the 1989 upper deck design. All right. Next up, got a 1984 Tom Seaver. I like the 84 design for the tops. Um working on 300 win guys and graded uh you know like i said i'm not a grade snob like i don't care if it's a, a one two three or four as long as the car looks pretty good the reality is on my budget i can't afford psa 10s anyway so 8.5 tom siever and oh, look at that look at those glorious stats mr met i mean you can probably see the stats better on the camera than i can but just the fact that they've got the entire stats on the back of the cards, that's a big deal to me. Um, you know, these modern cards, I'm not a huge fan. But, uh, you know, what can you do? Uh, look at that. It's another Nolan Ryan. 89 upper deck. That's a pretty cool card. I mean, when these came out, these uh, designs were just ahead of their time. Clean, crisp. Picture on the back. Got your stats. I mean, what more can you want? I mean, really uh, iconic set, my favorite set. Um, so anytime I see these graded guys like, I usually pick them up. It just kind of is what it is. All right. Big Braves fan. 
uh, John Smoltz, Randy Johnson, uh, some guy named King Griffey Jr. Those are the big guys in this set. And so we got John Smoltz rookie card. Obviously, they didn't have a lot of pictures because look at that. We just got a write up of them. Okay. Uh, getting down to the end here, guys. Y'all have been rambling. Ah, yes. Probably the most iconic card from my uh, childhood the 1989 Ken Griffey Jr. Upper Deck Number One. Uh, obviously, 50 bucks. About the going rate. Got a little write up, you know, got the minor league stats, but, uh, you know, that card is the, like I said, the most iconic card from my childhood. And then last but not least, I did not expect to see this card. I've been looking for a Sandy Koufax. It's a four. As you can see down here by the name, it's a little rough. But uh, 1962 tops, number five, Sandy Koufax. Uh, like I said, I like the stats. Can I read the stats? Stats are pretty clean. The back's pretty clean. The name, yeah, there's some wear, but the picture looks pretty good. Um, so obviously, I got a little crazy with it at the card show today. But these are my pickups, guys. Uh, tell me what you think, and uh, let me know which grading company is your favorite. Personally, mine's PSA. But uh, until next time.